Okay, I think we're good to get started. So welcome again, and, and thank you again for, for joining today's info session. Uh, to kick us off, um, it's my pleasure to introduce our Acting NYC Chief Service Officer, Laura Rogg. Laura? Thanks, Christy. I'm just going to take this off momentarily to say hi to everyone. Um, and thank you to all of you for joining us today. Um, we're incredibly excited to have, um, you know, a great group with us to hear more about the fellowship. Um, and I just wanted to kind of share fellows are really the cornerstone of our work here at NYC Service. Um, you know, they really work on a variety of issues across our office, everything from nonprofit community support to corporate volunteer engagement, to helping manage AmeriCorps programs, um, as well as social media and media in general. Um, um, and much more. So it's really been fantastic over the last few years to work with all of our, our classes of fellows each year. Um, and just wanted to kind of share, you know, with you all, uh, you know, as we've looked at this last year and the difficulties that it's brought, it also has brought out a real opportunity around civic engagement and volunteering and service. Um, and really this idea that people are seeing it more and more, you know, as, as more and more powerful in this moment, whether it's food access, helping seniors, helping parents connect to, um, you know, technology for their their kids, um, all of the, you know, organizing around racial justice right now that there's just so much and I think such a huge um, influx of people who are really becoming much more civically engaged, which I think makes our role here at NYC Service even more compelling and, and more needed in this moment now than ever. Um, and I think for us that, you know, we've really, We've always known this, but I think in the last year have also come to recognize just the role that people people power plays here in New York City. Um, you know that it's really at the heart of communities and the the things that they're able to do for each other, and it's really at the heart of the city's success of how we engage residents across the the city. Um, so we want you all to be a part of that. Um, you know, I think. Um, you know, we're really looking for um, members this year who are going to come in, come to serve, come to grow, um, also work with us to really mobilize people to address the city's greatest needs, you know, across all five boroughs. So we welcome you to the session. We're excited to have you here. You'll be hearing a lot of great information from all of the hiring managers around the different roles that are available this year. Um, and our office as well as uh, Moya, Mayor's Office of Immigrant Affairs, and we're quite excited that we have a fellow there as well. Um, so um, as far as that goes, just take it all in today. We're excited to see your applications, excited to read all of the things that go into that, um, and excited to be talking to many of you in the coming days and weeks. So thanks so much, and thanks to everybody on our staff for being here. Thanks, Laura. So to jump in to the info session, um, first I want to give you a quick overview. Today you're going to learn a little more about NYC Service and the Mayor's Office of Immigrant Affairs, the fellowship, expectations, the application process, us and life after the fellowship. You'll also hear directly from each hiring manager um, or, you know, the, that the person who may become your, your supervisor. Then we'll uh, close with a few reminders and resources. Um, also, I just want to mention you'll notice a chat feature. Please use this feature uh, to ask any questions you have. We will respond to all questions after the info session today, so there won't be a formal Q&A. Um, as part of today's info session. But we will respond to all the questions you enter in the chat box um, and then email those responses to everyone uh, next week. So let's get started. So for the most part throughout this presentation, you'll hear about NYC service. You will hear about the Mayor's Office of Immigrant Affairs um, later during the hiring manager segment. So, NYC Service is a division of the Mayor's Office, um, and we're focused on expanding civic engagement through volunteerism and service. Our mission is to build partnerships to deepen and expand civic engagement through volunteer and service programs, creating sustainable change for our city's greatest needs. And our vision is to unite New Yorkers in service to advance lifelong civic engagement for a more equitable and inclusive city. Now that you know a bit about NYC service, we'll get into what the fellowship experience is like. So the fellowship is made up of a cohort of coordinators. This fellowship varies from other opportunities for many reasons, including these three defining factors. One, um, it provides individuals with city government experience. Two, it's a one-year commitment. And three, it's a full-time professional experience. 
So I want to emphasize that as a coordinator at NYC Service or the Mayor's Office of Immigrant Affairs, you represent the office of the mayor and are a public servant. So embracing the mission and vision is key to the needs of the volunteers, national service members, partners, and organizations we serve. Other expectations for coordinators accepted in the fellowship are, one, uh, that they accept autonomy to drive projects forward. They take initiative and are excited to take on new responsibilities. Two, they exhibit respect and appreciation for an open office, their colleagues, and diversity, equity, and inclusion. And three, that they are flexible and collaborate on projects or events as a team. So at NYC Service, these values and beliefs are baked into all that we do. These values and beliefs give you insight into how all staff at NYC Service develop and guide the work. Each coordinator is responsible for incorporating these values and beliefs into their daily and long-term projects. Now I'm gonna pass it over to my colleague, Denishua, to go over the application process. Thank you, Christy. Good morning, everyone, and happy Friday. So to get started, I'm gonna do a quick run through the application process. The basic requirements are residency. So you have to live within the five boroughs, reside in one of the five boroughs within the first 90 days of the hire. It's a requirement for the city, um, but related to COVID, expect to hear we may, it defers, but as of right now, we may be hybrid as um, office schedules and return to office requirements are still um, being worked through. Education, um, have a bachelor's degree, no more than four years out of um, undergrad or grad is strongly preferred, and service, um, one year of national service or volunteer experience. Um, application components, so um, the first step is um, the online application um, where you could save your responses and uh, return to later and you'll know why that is moving on to the next steps. Um, the second it's your transcript. Um, unofficial transcripts are needed for the application. Um, officials will be required if accept also be accepted. Um, three would be a resume. One page is preferred in length. Uh, fourth is your uh, personal statement, which is a required essay that we do. Um, we, it would be part of the application. So as you submit your application, these are all things that you should have. But by the time um, it's submitted, that's what makes it a complete um, application. And then fifth, it's your references. You would be required to submit two contacts as your references, and we will connect with them. So I highly suggest um, letting your two references know ahead of time because they will be contacted as well to make sure that they're submitted. So your application is complete. And once that's all set up, you could you, then it would be considered a complete application. Um, we strongly encourage everyone to take a view at our web page for the service fellowship. Um, view all of the position descriptions. Um, access link to the application is also on our website access all the in instructions. And if you start an application, as I mentioned before, um, you will receive a link in your e inbox to refer back to it. Um, and also on our page, we have a few one pagers that I strongly suggest folks to look into. Uh, who typically applies? Uh, folks that are interested in community building, service, government, project design, uh, with what backgrounds? Um, from all over the country, um, range of professional experiences and education, and aspirations to grow your career in government, nonprofit, or corporate social responsibility sector. Uh, the application timeline. So currently our application is open, which is why we're here today. And um, our deadline is June 4th at 5 p.m. Um, and it must be a complete application. Nothing should be missing. That means everything that I went over before the components are all fully submitted. Um, if not, the application will not be reviewed. Um, between June 21st and July 16th, the processes will be a phone, in, a phone screen interview with your hiring manager, possible hiring manager, and a virtual panel interview. 
uh, for the candidates that are invited to participate in the panel interview round will be required to submit one sample of previous work that demonstrates their professional skills and or past work experience. Work samples may include, but are not limited to project plans, academic papers, social media toolkits, facts sheets, I'm sorry, fact sheets, I'm sorry for the mask, uh, reports and PowerPoint presentations. Um, and then by July 23rd, notification of acceptance will be sent out via email. And then the onboarding pr process is between July 26th, um, late August, early September. And then the uh, fellowship will begin between late August, early September. Uh, and now the moment we've all been waiting for, <laughs> um, we will meet each of the hiring managers uh, and they will give you a full quick intro of who they are, their team, and what they are expecting for these coordinator positions. So first we have Lovely from Moya. Hi, good morning, everyone, and welcome. Thank you um, for the team and NYC service. My name is Lovely Paula, and I am the community service manager at Moya, um, overseeing um, community service team, working closely with Eileen, who couldn't be here today with IGA Intergovernmental Affairs. Um, I oversee the team for volunteer program, Know Your Rights program, and I also supervise the team of, of NYC fellows as well as um, other interns. Um, uh, Mayor's Office of Immigrant Affairs Volunteer Coordinator Program respond to and manage requests for volunteers both internally at Moya and with other city agency partners, recruit and engage immigrant volunteer across Moya's Volunteers Program, develop new and grow existing relationship with other city agencies and immigrant serving community-based organization. Moya is currently, currently works with, to, with to both recruit volunteer as well as other additional volunteer opportunities, um, as well as supporting our team, CS team, um, with you know with some with the um, X Moya hotline, oftentimes with X Moya voicemail, etc. Thank you. Thank you, lovely. And now up next is Aaron Miner, the director of National Service. Good morning, everybody, uh, and thank you for joining us here on our virtual info session for our NYC Service Fellowship. Um, as Denise was said, my name is Aaron Miner. I'm the Managing Director of Service Year Programs here at NYC Service, and really exciting, excited to be recruiting for three coordinators um, to join our team of 10 uh, as our National Service Program Coordinators. Um, we manage uh, three AmeriCorps programs um, from our team, and two of them, City Service Corps and NYC Civic Corps, um, the coordinators do the day-to-day -day aspects um, and management of that programming um, at the members' host sites, which are nonprofits and city agencies throughout the five boroughs. So there are three main things as part of this um, coordinator role. The first is interpersonal management. Um, so uh, our coordinators do things such as host site committees, um, running or host site visits, running member committees, um, and member networking and social events. So creating and developing those and enacting those. Also event development and management. So um, leading and developing different trainings for our members, um, our program kickoff and recognition ceremony, as well as things like MLK Day of Service um, and other service days that we may have throughout the program year. And then finally, um, and maybe the biggest part of the role is reporting and compliance. So we, uh, through our AmeriCorps programs, are responsible to the federal government um, to report um, throughout the year on different things. And so our members do host site visits, meeting with both members and supervisors, um, and do things like review timesheets and monthly reports to see what are the trends happening on the ground in our programming and how can we respond to that through trainings, supports, um, and other things. Um, this is an opportunity, if you're interested, to shape member experience, AmeriCorps member experience, as well as the overall program. Um, and we're looking for people who are dynamic, creative, 
passionate about service if you served as an AmeriCorps member. Um, it's not a requirement, but certainly a plus um, to understand the AmeriCorps experience. Um, and hope you're interested in our role. And I'm going to pass it on to Megan Tennis. Hello, everyone. My name is Megan Tennis. I'm going to be the supervisor of the National Service Operations Manager. I'm currently the National Service Operations Manager. I would be supervising the National Service Operations Coordinator. Ooh, words. Um, okay, so um, I myself started as a fellow working um, at NYC Service. I was a City Service Corps Coordinator with one of our National Service programs, and I've been doing the operational parts of this program for the past few years. Um, and this is a new position. So overall, you know, we have a lot of systems and processes that we use for running our national service programs, but they haven't been updated or looked at in quite a few years. Um, so what we really need is a set of fresh eyes who can kind of look at and understand everything that we do on the back end of our programs and think about how can we improve these things? What new ways can we get this information that's more effective, you know, easier for our members, easier for our supervisors, um, and, you know, just overall stronger processes. So it's kind of a position where you can, you know, make your mark on the back end of our three different AmeriCorps programs. Additionally, I supervise our VISTA leader who works on the third AmeriCorps program in our program, an AmeriCorps VISTA program. So you'll be working with the VISTA leader to kind of support them also in systems work. Um, so you'll work on all three AmeriCorps programs a little bit more on our VISTA program, um, just because that's not who I work with. Um, so, yes. Thanks, Megan. So now I'm going to share about the position I'm hiring for, which is the NYC Service Year Program Coordinator. So in addition to NYC Service, you know, directly managing three AmeriCorps programs. We also work with all the other AmeriCorps and service year programs across New York City to provide kind of a range of capacity building services and resources that can benefit programs, members, alums, um, as well as just convene the larger community of AmeriCorps service year programs um, in, in New York City. And so that's where uh, a lot of my work is focused Focused, and that's what this uh, the coordinator for this position would be focusing on. So convening and mobilizing um, the service year community um, that is in New York, um, promoting so uh, excuse me local service year programming um, and opportunities, um, and as I said, administering uh, capacity building services and resources. I'm going to pass it off uh, to my colleague Evan Carl. Thanks so much. Hi all, my name is Evan Carl. I'm the uh, Senior Capacity Building Manager at NYC Service. And as such, I oversee the office's uh, capacity building team as well as our neighborhood strategy and engagement portfolio. And I'm actually gonna be talking about uh, two roles we're gonna be hiring for this year. So first is the capacity building manager that you can see on the screen, uh, or the capacity building coordinator rather. Um, and with regards to this role, the person would essentially be working very closely with other members of the team with a focus on building the capacity of our city agency partners. So while by definition, that's going to involve working on a host of different projects, one that is particularly compelling, I think, is the NYC Service Bureau, which is an internal volunteer capacity building model focused on supporting city agencies to carry out their priorities uh, and meet community needs through the strategic engagement of volunteers. Uh, so by the time this individual comes into this role, uh, we will have launched the application, which we're launching towards the end of June. Uh, so when they come on, uh, we'll be in the process of reviewing applications and selecting our cohort of city agencies. Um, so over the course of your term, this work would really require a host of different pieces. You'll be managing relationships with partners uh, and assisting in the development and implementation of their volunteer impact plans. Uh, it will involve tracking and reporting out on agency performance while also implementing regular meetings with city agency partners to check in on their progress and help share best practices. Uh, the second, though admittedly smaller projects the individual in this role will be working on is GoPass, which is a city-run background check system that we run in partnership with the Department of Education's Office of Personnel Investigation. So uh, while traditionally the individual in this role would be responsible for leading trainings, communicating fingerprint policies to New York City nonprofit users and volunteers uh, and other components, we're actually currently in the midst of streamlining some of those processes 
to better serve nonprofits who engage volunteers in New York City public schools. Uh, that said, the individual in this role would still be responsible for analyzing volunteer data from those organizations taking part in GoPass, and will be working very closely with the Department of Education when needed to share announcements with the broader GoPass network. Um, and I think we can move on to the next role. So this is the Neighborhood Strategy and Engagement Coordinator. Uh, this is a role I'm actually incredibly excited to hire for, uh, as I actually got my start at NYC Service working as a fellow on our neighborhood projects. So to give you just some background, one of the most interesting things I think to come out of the pandemic was mutual aid networks, which as some of you guys know, uh, were non-official networks of community members, leaders and neighbors who really came together during a time of crisis to support one another. So as a team that's devoted to capacity building and community engagement, we're particularly interested in understanding what conditions give rise to these movements and how the city can better support those entities and the residents that take part in them. So as such, we're currently in the midst of working with Public Agenda, which is a research entity, to study key neighborhoods where mutual aid networks blossomed. And the person in this role, taking on this coordinator position, uh, will be responsible for really owning that workflow. So they'll be recruiting groups uh, and nonprofits for participation, eventually coordinating trainings and supports in select neighborhoods, and supporting our external researchers, particularly when it comes time to share out on findings. Uh, in addition to that uh, sort of work portfolio, this individual will also be supporting NYC Civic Impact Funding, uh, which is a small grants program that provides funding and other supports to New York City nonprofit organizations that use volunteers to deliver essential services to residents. So throughout the COVID-19 crisis, that program focused most intently on food distribution, though as we begin to round the curve, I'm really excited to work with whoever ends up being in this role to determine what additional city needs can be addressed through what I believe is a particularly fruitful model, one that involves a funding allotment, ongoing supports, uh, and us really serving as a guide to other city resources. Uh, and then finally, just one last thing I wanna say when it comes to volunteer capacity building is that retention is key. Uh, one of the most effective ways to keep volunteers around, we found is to recognize their efforts and ensure that their voices are included in the conversation. So to that end, uh, the individual in this role will also be supporting Volunteers Count and the Mayor's Service Recognition Program which are two programs that recognize volunteers and their affiliated organizations each year uh, for their service to the city. So overall, I would just say both these roles uh, are really dynamic positions that I think involve a lot of pieces. Uh, in the age of COVID-19, uh, we found that the importance of capacity building has only become more clear. Uh, over the course of the pandemic, our team played a really big role on the Volunteer Coordination Task Force, which focused on answering city agency and nonprofit organizations' requests for volunteer assistance uh, with food distribution. Uh, we worked with the deputy mayor's office to stand up a program where volunteers could call uh, isolated seniors uh, and a ton of other work. So uh, it was a really, really interesting time to be part of this team. Uh, so in that spirit, uh, I just wanna say I'm really happy to see everybody on the webinar today. If you have any questions, uh, you can feel free to send one to me in the comments and I'll throw it over to the next speaker. Um, my name is Shilpa Jackman. I'm the Director of Public-Private Partnerships here at NYC Service, and I will talk to you today about um, the Corporate Partnerships Coordinator, whom I oversee. Um, the Corporate Partnerships Coordinator will work with the Public-Private Partnerships team in helping us to um, continue our support for corporate volunteer engagement programs across the city. Um, through NYC Service, the public-private partnerships team has really built a network of businesses in New York that we um, maintain relationships with, with and help engage in programming. Um, so through this role, you'll get to work with a wide range of businesses um, from Chanel, NFL, Sony, and MasterCard. Um, those are some of our partners in the past. And really what we do is try and provide technical assistance and guidance to these organizations um, to continue to improve their employee volunteer engagement um, and also to continue to assist and support them in um, their corporate social responsibility programs as a whole. Um, so two main projects that the Corporate Partnerships Coordinator will oversee is the Good For Me, Good For My City campaign, which is um, a campaign that really motivates these businesses to continue to improve their um, employee volunteer engagement programming and um, and really um, builds upon the impact that these programs have on our city. Um, this program has been around for two years, but 
um, you know, we've had a lot of change in it in the past few years. So um, the person in this coordinator role will really get a chance to continue designing and um, improving this campaign. Um, the corporate partnerships coordinator will also be responsible for um, spearheading our mayoral service recognition awards um, and the corresponding ceremony, which is really um, a public facing event for NYC service as a whole that helps to celebrate volunteerism, um, both for our businesses and for communities at large um, and uh, nonprofits and CBO partners. So. Um, it's really an opportunity to engage uh, all of NYC services stakeholders and celebrate um, the volunteer activities of our, our city. Um, I think that's all. So if you have any questions, let me know in the chat, but I uh, look forward to seeing your applications. Thank you, Shilpa. So hello there again. Um, Denise Ramirez, Administrative Assistant. I've been with the team for about two years, next month. Um, I'm very excited to introduce the Digital Engagement Coordinator position. Um, it's a new team, new position. Uh, main focus is our new website that we're currently very excited to get our hands on already. Um, lots of cross collaboration across the office. The exciting part of the uh, Digital Engagement Coordinator is um, They'll be supporting um, all six teams across the office in various ways, also maintaining our website, um, uh, social media platform, posts, um, being able to build relationships across agencies to, to support effective digital campaigns, um, okay. be a creative mind when it comes to being our voice and tone for when we want to share um, specific events that the, the office is holding, um, uh, work on special uh, projects related to training and supporting staff and marketing efforts. Um, and I will be very, working very closely with this individual. So it's very exciting. Um, they'll also be part of monitoring and tracking, analyzing digital marketing effectiveness and uh, uh, yeah, supporting teams all across developing um, engagement opportunities. Uh, for initiatives. So with that being said, um, I believe we have introduced all our, our hiring managers and we're just going to go into um, life after the fellowship. Um, and I pass it over to Christy. Thanks, Tanisha. And thanks again to all of our hiring, hiring managers for joining today and, and giving everyone a brief overview of your positions. Um, as you can see, we have a, a great range of positions open um, and we're eager to review your applications in just a few weeks. So we just wanted to take a minute to talk briefly about life after the fellowship. Some of you may be wondering, you know, after you do this one year or more of the fellowship, you know, what can you expect maybe as next steps? Um, we've had this fellowship program for several years, and so based on the uh, experiences of our past and, and even some of our current fellows, um, what we can tell you is that um, typically individuals uh, do, they commit to one year of the fellowship, but there could potentially be the opportunity to do a second and then maybe even a third year of the fellowship program, um, but that is not guaranteed. Um, in terms of post-fellowship, uh, our uh, fellows tend to move on to either academic or professional pursuits. Um, most of them, uh, you, some of them will move on to graduate school um, and it's a range in terms of, you know, what the areas of study, uh, public policy, public health, um, public administration, law school, um, MBA programs um, are, are certainly popular among uh, the, the fellows. Um, for those who move on to professional um, opportunities, um, that too is a mix. Um, certainly a good number of our fellows have moved on to roles within government, be that with the city of New York or other local governments um, or at the state or federal level. Um, within the city of New York, we've certainly had some fellows as you've even heard today, uh, move on to uh, permanent um, employment with NYC service, but we also have fellows who work at the Department of Education, Small Business Services, um, among others. In terms of nonprofit employment, uh, former fellows uh, are at UNICEF, um, foundations, ACLU, the Student Success Network, just to name a few. 
And then in the private sector, uh, you know, we have former fellows who are employed at American Express. Um, and, you know, some other uh, corporations within New York or beyond. Now I'm going to uh, give it back to Denishwa to close us out. Thank you, Christy. So, um, so that really concludes our fellowship session. But before um, we end here, we just want to add a few notes um, and for also just to reiterate um, any questions that are added on the chat today we will respond uh, via email and we will also be sharing it on our website. Um, we will be creating an FAQ just to make sure all the questions are answered. Um, so I wanna move into some reminder resources. Again, um, applications along with all required documents and reference letters must be submitted Friday, June 4th by 5 p.m. Um, the best resource is our website. Um, you'll find everything you need there from promotion, uh, from, sorry, position descriptions, um, eligibility, our previous FAQs that maybe they um, may respond to some questions you have today, um, and any further support you may need or questions you may have besides whatever we're able to collect today. Um, just reach out to us um, at nycservicefellowship at cityhall.nyc.gov. Um, and... We want to thank everyone to um, having some time with us today and learning more about the fellowship program. So thank you for being here today. Yep. Thank you. We'll uh, keep the Zoom open for just another few minutes in case there's some last minute questions you want to add to the chat box. Um, and you can expect to receive an email with uh, the answers to your questions um, Monday or Tuesday of next week. Um, and then we'll also have them posted on the website. But thank you all for joining. Thank you again for your time and interest in the fellowship program.